In this case, it's pretty straightforward. It's white. So now, as I scrub through here, you'll notice that AutoSketch has now done to white. So it's very, very straightforward. You'll notice it was just a couple of steps to be able to get this neat, neat uh, uh, effect. You can apply this effect to photographs as well. And if you're a paint shop pro or a Photoshop user or a paint program user, uh, you'll find that there's a lot of flexibility in this. I'll show you one more example of how to draw somebody on. So here's that girl again. Let me just pop her into the, the overlay track here. You'll notice now if I, if I click on the top here, she's been scaled. Let me just move her over a bit. Let's say, for instance, right there, and say I wanted to have an, uh, the auto sketch effect happen to her. I can go into my effects area and drag auto sketch onto her. And as I come through here, you'll notice she's drawing on, and she'll fill right out here like that. And again, if I want, I can go in and double click on her, and it will allow me to adjust her attributes here. I can go in and distort or resize. Here we have her resized onto the screen. And again, I can go back into my chroma key and I can apply overlay options and select the colors within this area here. And here she'll be drawing on in white as in, in white at the end. Hopefully you can see this. My go to meeting seems to be uh go to webinar seems to be slowing down a bit. So very easy, you can just apply effects that way. Now, titling is also very straightforward. If I go into my titles, say for instance here I have my sax, you'll notice that our environment is, has multiple uh, tracks in it. You can change the number of tracks when you do overlays and this sort of thing very, very easily. You just click on the track manager and you'll notice that you'll have a number of tracks here. You can turn them on and off as you go. We have six overlay tracks, so you can have six graphics or six videos and picture in pictures happening on that, and a main video track. We have two additional title tracks, and we have four audio tracks as well. So it's a pretty robust environment for the home user. So I'll go in here, and I'll say I want to add another title. Simply to add a title, you just click in the title area. And when you do that, up in the preview area, it says double-click here to add a title. So let me just add um, a title here really quickly. Once the title's added, I can just scale it if I like. I can rotate it, too, as well. I can go into the title attri attributes, which automatically open when I'm doing titling, and I can change the color. I can use a color picker, or I can use that. I can go in and change the shadow, shadow types, outline types, shadow types, transparency of the text, so on and so forth, and borders as well. So it has all kinds of uh, functionality as well. I can use alignment, so I can align it in the center, the center top, the tight, top right, this sort of thing, all within the safe area of the video. We can also open subtitle files. So if you're doing subtitling, you can actually go in here and, uh, and do, uh, um, uh, uh, import a subtitle file if you have multilingual uh, uh, videos that you have to have a subtitle running along with the, the narration track. We allow you to import a uh, subtitling file. Now, titles, you can also add uh, effects to titles. So in this case here, I have this title here. I can go in and, and drag an effect from one of my effects up here, say, for instance, Whirl. But one of the neat features is, is that once you have a title already done, an effect that you really like, say, for instance, on this one here, it says My Sax, and then it will change into this twirl here right here, and a new song. I can go in and copy these attributes. So rather than going into my effects and redoing the effect every time, I can just say, copy the attributes of that title. And I can go to the title that I'm working on, and I'll say, paste attributes. So as I scrub through this one, you'll notice it's blue, and it has that effect happening in it as well. At the same time, I can also copy uh, full titles themselves. So for instance, right-click on this one here. I'll say, copy. And I can actually paste that anywhere uh, that I want and be able to have that there. Some of the other effects that we have, 
And I'm not sure how the GoToMeeting webinar software will show the motion here. I know that it slows down because a lot of people are watching it. We have transition effects that are GPU accelerated. Uh, the graphics processing unit, if it's an NVIDIA card or an ATI card, uh, we will use those to help us power through these uh, complex transitions. In this case, it's a uh, deform uh, barn door. Uh, we have, for instance, this one here is yet, yet another one going from one to another uh, video in that sense. We also have, for instance, as I showed you before, Auto Sketch. So this is another one called Roto Sketch, which allows you to sketch, uh, have a video sketch. You'll find that a lot of the things in Video Studio work very, very quickly. So you'll be able to stay creative without having to wait for renders. So that one's called FX Sketch. We'll go to the next one here. This is FX Sketch with color overlay, very, very similar to the previous one. And it's a very similar, uh, easy setting. So let me show you how to set that one. We double click on the on that clip and I'll go to the attributes area and you'll notice again here's the filter FX sketch. I'll go customize the filter. There's my original video and there's the on the right side the processed video. I can go in here and say rather than sketch I want overlay to make it like a cartoon. So here we have edge detected sketching. I can change the pen if I like and uh, using the original color as well. So I'll say OK. So there you go, is, is the girl. Now she's got a, a pen outlining some of the edges. I can go in here as well if I double click on that clip. Again, back into the video attribute area, I'll go into color correction. And in the color correction, I'll say, uh, let's knock up the saturation a bit. And pull the gamma down. Now if I go in here, you'll notice a little bit more saturated, a bit more cartoony look. So if you want to do cartoons, it's a very popular look nowadays to do these cartoons. You can do that very, very quickly within Video Studio. And this is a feature that uh, was new in X3, is it not, Jan? It is, yeah. It's, it's brand new in X3. A lot of these features that we have in here uh, were added because of the uh, uh, GPU acceleration that we're, that, that we're using the, the NVIDIA stuff. So before here we, it would have taken. I guess before it would have taken too much time to make these uh, viable. Yeah, it's it's the rendering. One of the things that you'll find in video editing or or anything that you work on the computer, once you start waiting for renders and once you start uh, having a really long learning curve on a piece of software, your creativity ends up taking a second seat, and you end up spending more time trying to figure out the tools and waiting for rendering than actually being creative. What we're trying to do is make the environment so fast and as few clicks as possible to get nice looks that you can stay creative while you're assembling your video. This is really important in slideshows when you're trying to, uh, in your mind, organize 250 pictures, uh, 250 photographs in a chronology on your timeline. We've tried to make it very, very easy to copy the effects, paste the effects without you having to go in and, and uh, spend time on the tool and forgetting where you are in your timeline. So it's, a, it's an accelerated environment that, that not only accelerated from the software standpoint, but from the production standpoint. You can put a lot of things together. Yeah, in fact, I think we did some, uh, not only do I think, I know we did some testing last year and we came out as uh, the top speed in terms of rendering from ABC HD uh, camcorders to ABC HD discs and so forth. So we've really got some top rank performance here. Yes, yes. And one of the things I wanted to sort of be clear is that the, the Video Studio Pro is, is a, uh, a, a home piece of software. This is really good for the, the, the home user that uh, has a number of genres, birthday parties, celebrations, um, retirements, uh, weddings, this sort of thing. It's a very good piece of software for that. I don't want people to think that this would be a broadcast piece of software. Certainly, you know, broadcasting is one of these areas that uh, that is uh, now with the web, you can everybody becomes a broadcaster. But it's not something to be used in a professional environment, in like a post-production facility or in a television station. I would just the tools are oriented toward the home user to make it enjoyable to make video, but also make really lovely videos that look uh, professional. So here's back to, for instance, rippling. This is a filter that we have that uses the GPU, works in real time, and allows you to ripple the video. Uh, we have monochrome filters that allow you to, to strobe the video into different colors as well. As I scrub through the timeline here, uh, we have a distortion uh, filter. For instance, here's a pinch, a pinch filter that will pinch. And again, these are all customizable. You can go in and change the way, uh, the way they behave. 
you know, here I have a very drastic pinch happening. You can see her hand getting very, very small. But as I scrub through here, you'll notice there's, uh, there's different degrees of these effects. I just wanted to sort of make them, exaggerate them so you get to see them. So here's a punch one, which punches out of the, the video. Here's that one I was mentioning, the roto sketch.